What is good, Bruin Bible listeners? It is your host, Will Decker. We got to get a sponsor in before we start this episode. It's Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines and the latest matchup reports for this year's NBA playoffs. Bet Online is your sports intel headquarters this season, as we have you covered for your insider sports wagering needs. From basketball, Major League Baseball, NHL, hockey, golf, to UFC and boxing. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your home. Make sure you check out Bet Online. Get into the action today. So head to the website or use your mobile device to join and be sure to use your promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts now to the Bruin Bible. Man, what is up, Bruin Bible listeners? It is your host, Will Decker. A solo pod coming your guys' way. I uh, just want to do kind of a quick hit update on everything that's gone on in the past week uh, for your UCLA Bruins. Apologies, I have been in Atlanta. I am in my hotel room in Atlanta, Georgia. I uh, had a wedding this past weekend and continued into Uh, the start of the week due to work. So I apologize on the slow response to this, but excited to be talking some ball. Uh, Love talking UCLA. It's a great day to be a Bruin, as our guy Jerry Neuheisel says. Let's start from the top. The commitment we got, Blake Tabarachi, uh, six foot two, 210 pound linebacker from Utah, Uh, the state of Utah. He's a really fun player to watch on film. Very fast, very quick. And can lay the wood from the linebacking position. They're very athletic. I think he would probably be similar to, you know, when you compare him to a player on the roster, the current roster. He reminds me a lot of John John Vons. And we've talked about, you know, that hybrid safety spot uh, where it's linebacker, it's safety. They kind of set the tone. They make a big play. He's He looks like he is fast enough um, to play some safety if it really came down to it. And just having that type of talent – in the open field, uh, whether it's playing outside linebacker, whether it's dropping back in coverage, I think he's going to be very, very good when it comes to UCLA, given what we know. And there's a couple of reasons I believe why Blake Tabarachi is going to be a standout player for UCLA when his time is done. He had a nice list of offers. And I know I talked about this, you know, last time uh, with the last UCLA linebacking commitments, but this guy, Tabarachi, he has offers from USC, Michigan, Utah. Dion wanted him at Colorado. And, you know, just the, the, the best schools on the West Coast outside of Oregon, who I do believe we're going to, going to get in on him, have all extended an offer. Not even just interest, just, hey, we want you to come play here. And I think that really bodes well for the likes of a guy like Tabarachi when it's all said and done. So, Really pleased with that. You can see that elite programs wanted him. And the other point, man, I mean, I've, I've made this before. Um, when we had this commitment with the likes of an Isaiah Patterson last week, I said, you're going to get the best coach in the world, Ken Norton Jr., leading them in the linebacking room. It's, the, it's why Oladeja transferred here. It's why Darius Mwasa transferred here. And why I believe we have the deepest linebacking room we've maybe have ever had at UCLA currently with the likes of Ken Norton Jr. and elevating that level of play. I trust who Ken Norton Jr. wants to play linebacker. And to kind of run it back, this guy has been the foundational leader when it comes to building careers, whether it was Clay Matthews and Brian Cushing and, you know, Ray Maluga at USC. It was Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright in Seattle. It was Khalil Mack. You know, he was an outside linebacker, pass rusher. But who was coaching, you know, the, the Raiders defense at that time? That was Ken Norton Jr. So this guy repeatedly has shown time and time again to get the best out of his players. And he knows a thing or two about playing linebacker himself, given his pedigree, given what we know from his time at UCLA, even into the pros, you know, when he's winning 
multiple Super Bowls, the likes of the San Francisco 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys. Sign me up. Tabarachi looks great. You pair him with Isaiah Patterson and just the coaching he's going to get. I think this is very, very special. And, you know, I, I think we're not blown away necessarily with the four star players or the three star players, excuse me. But 40% of all players drafted the next level are three star guys. And to kind of make a point out of this on how important coaches are and their development, let's take a look at some of the running backs that Deshaun Foster was able to develop for UCLA. Joshua Kelly, transfer from UC Davis, two star NFL. Demetric Felton, three star wide receiver, low tier ranked, drafted NFL. Britton Brown, three star running back, went to Duke originally, then went to UCLA because he knew Foster was that guy, NFL. Oh, you want more? Let's go to the offensive line. Tim Drevno put two two star guards into the NFL this past year. And it's not like the undrafted free agent thing. NFL teams picked these guys on their draft boards, they gave them the phone call themselves. John Gaines and Mafi, lower tier two star guys were two of the best guards in all of college football last year. If you don't believe me, go check the PFF stats. So, yes, I agree stars are important up to an extent, but I almost believe that if you just have a raw talent and you can get the right coach to get them, I almost believe that the coaching is more important in terms of their discipline, their habits, how they see the defense, how they watch film. And, I, you know, if Ken Norton Jr. wants Isaiah Patterson or Tabarachi – I'm all in on this. So I'm very, very pleased with the addition of Tabarachi. You know, like we mentioned, three offensive linemen committed to UCLA already in the fold and Thorpe Taylor, Schraller, and Joshua Glantz. Uh Dunbar Hawkins is still the highest recruit to UCLA's class. Uh, modern day kid. We've mentioned this before. We like the pipeline of modern day. You know, Quinn Lake was from there. Uh, we got a couple other guys in the roster right now from modern day. Let's keep that thing going. You know, it's, it's nice to get high level players from the arguably the best football school on the West coast. And then you got Tabarachi and Patterson. So good things coming ahead for these guys uh, with the development of Ken Norton jr. And the raw talents that they possess Bruin Bible listeners. We've got a special sponsor uh, for today's episode. It is AG one. AG one has been something that I've really enjoyed using in my spare time. 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole source food nutrients in one scoop that you can use into your water. You stir it up. I use it before my workouts, before I start my day, and it has totally given me the energy I need to do the little things in life, like going to work, getting extra, you know, an extra boost, a second wind, if you will, for a workout before I play pickleball with my friends. Just it puts you in a good spirit of mind, and you know you're doing the healthiest possible thing by putting AG1 in your body. Make sure to check us out and get a special deal with the Bruin Bible it's www.drinkag1.com slash Bruin Bible to get the special deal that we provide. Once again, www.drinkag1.com slash Bruin Bible to get that special deal. Now back to the Bruin Bible. Next, let's talk about the travel of UCLA. And I got to be honest, this is the first time that me as a fan of UCLA and, you know, their move to the Big Ten, I was all, you know, in favor of it when I got over the weirdness of them no longer being the Pac-12. It's a little bit much, 23,708 miles for UCLA traveling in their first year of Big Ten competition. They're going to Hawaii. They're going down south, which is a team we'll get to in a second. They're going all over the country, and they will have more miles, I read, than any NFL team that is scheduled in 2024, and that includes the teams that go to London. So, I mean, it's, it's brutal. I don't know if we should be putting that on a college football team. I think the Hawaii and LSU game uh, are games they couldn't contractually get out of. So I think those were kind of difficult to go over. But when you tack those long travel times to what they are already going up against in the Big Ten, I think it is it is a very, very, uh, you know, just over overextending their travel. And it's really frustrating to see that for UCLA and their kids. Now, with that being said, we did have the schedule released, and I wanted to include my top five games that I am most excited for for UCLA. And uh, a lot of debate in here, some that are probably going to surprise you, some that I think are fairly obvious to who we want to see. And we're going to do five to one. I'm going to start with number five, and this is probably the biggest shocker on the list. Fresno State. Yeah, I'm excited to play Fresno State. Why do you ask? We have lost to Fresno State the last three times we have played them. I mean, you probably remember 2018, McMarion, the tailback. 
for Fresno State, just wearing us down. Three touchdowns in the second half on the ground ultimately led to a UCLA loss. And then this last one, Jake Hayner. I mean, heroic isn't even the word. This guy was playing hurts down bad, drove the length of the field on UCLA's defense for the game-winning score. And it was heartbreaking for UCLA fans all around. It was one of the times I think UCLA fans uh, were lowest in the past three years when I've covered them was another loss to Fresno State on such a lackadaisical collective defensive effort there. So I, I believe, for me, that this is a huge game for Chip Kelly and UCLA. Chip is 0-2 himself against Fresno State. And, hey, I am on the Chip Kelly bandwagon. You guys know this. I support him. I think we're going to start to see this program sprout its wings, which I'm really, really excited about. But if he loses, if he's 0-3 against Fresno State in his tenure, I am getting closer and closer to believing that the anti-Chip Kelly crowd is correct. That's just a team that is very, very competitive. I know they've won 10-plus games the last two years, or 10 apiece. So it was 20 wins over the last two years. But, man, if they go 0-3 to Fresno State, a non-Power 5 school, and I know they had DeBoer who's up at Washington. Chip kind of got his revenge when they played the Huskies last year at the Rose Bowl. It was a phenomenal win in a night game. And, yeah, they got Jeff Tedford now, who's a heck of a college football coach. Tedford, you might remember him in Cal. He guided the careers of Aaron Rodgers, Marshawn Lynch, Deshaun Jackson, big-name players, and got them to the heights that they wanted to get to, which was high-round high, high draft picks and uh, players that made a mainstay in the NFL. So that is my first game. It's going to be at the Rose Bowl again. We've got to take care of business at Fresno State. And because – We've had those heartbreaking losses. This is why I've circled at number five. The true UCLA fans know that the Fresno State game is big. The fourth one, and I think people might be surprised at how low this is on the list, given how the last game transpired. LSU, man. LSU, we are going to Death Valley, UCLA fans. I am incredibly pumped. This is one of the games that I have circled where hell or high water, I'm going to find a way into this game. Like, we are going to travel to LSU. We are going to tailgates. It has oftentimes been regarded as the best tailgate within the college football scene by a number of different sources. It is one of the more insane environments in college football. 103,000 fans pack it each and every week. It's going to be a blast. And the reason I, you know, have them this high is gun to my head right now. If you're asking me if healthy, do I think Ethan Garbers – is going to at least split reps with Dante Moore. Maybe not be the overarching number one starter when all is said and done, but you know, play his fair share of snaps. I think Ethan Garbers is going to play a lot this year. So this could be the first game that Dante Moore is really, really tested if the Garbers to start for 2023 goes to plan. As you know, you know, we watched spring practice, Garbers was the better quarterback. It's not a really an objective statement. Ask any of the writers that were out there. Ask any of the fans that were out there. Moore showed flashes, and I'm impressed with him. He was 17 years old. I'm not taking anything away from him. But Ethan Garbers, man, I might believe that the offense might flow in a better way with Ethan Garbers at the helm. So this could be the first real test for Dante Moore going up against a defense that's probably as close as you're going to see to an NFL defense, you know, with the likes of the Bamas and the Georges and things like that, especially – at Death Valley, 103,000 fans in your face. For a travel destination, for the pedigree of the game, for UCLA beating them the last time we played them in 2021, this game's going to have some juice to it, and I'm excited to go and watch in LSU. Let's try to make a trip now with all the UCLA fans. Let's get everybody out there, and let's get people ready. It's going to be a lot of fun. Number three, this is another kind of surprising one, I think, to people. I'm going with Iowa. Iowa, we were playing at Iowa City in Kinnick Stadium for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And I want to tell you guys why I believe Iowa is going to be a fun, fun environment. Is I think for me personally, this is the team that you see here when going to the Big Ten. Iowa has been a team that every three or four years has competed for a Big Ten championship. They've made Rose Bowl under, under Kirk Ferentz the last decade. They made some incredible New Year's Day Bowls. They have found a way to be competitive without the resources and, let's face it, maybe some of the talent that UCLA has had compared to what Iowa brings to the table. Learning from Kirk Ferentz and their model in terms of how they've been able to stay competitive, be a relevant college football team, 
Yes, I know they were miserable to watch on offense last year, but they had a lot of high-level draft picks, whether it was Sam Laporta, you know, Riley Moore, any of these dudes. So I believe if UCLA were to take a look at what they've got, you know, when they produce their O-line, you know, and that comes from a guy named George Barnett. You know, he developed Tyler Linderbaum, who was the best center prospect I've ever seen at the college level. Tim Drevno, great offensive line coach. He actually finished number 10 in big game boomers, O-line coaches of 2022 last year. So Tim Drevno, we know his history. We know he's an offensive line guy, worked with the Niners, worked with USC, has put a lot of guys in the NFL. We can kind of maybe come close to what Barnett does, not to the exact level, but having a guy that is similar to that. As well as the tight ends. I mean, we know what Derek Sage did. I know he's no longer here. He's in Nevada. But, you know, Brian Ferentz, the son of Kirk Ferentz, they put together a Noah Fant, George Kittle, TJ Hawkins, and Sam Laporta group all to the NFL. What has UCLA done? Caleb Wilson, draft pick. Devin Asiasi, draft pick. George, uh, Greg Dulcich, draft pick. You know, I think Montevallo's got a chance to go to the NFL given his pedigree and given him coming from Oregon. So this is a game I like. Iowa City is an underrated town. I've been to it. You know, they have one of the best traditions in all of college football uh, with the children waving from the hospital. I believe the start of the quarter. It's just a good college town, and it's a team that UCLA should do everything in their power to model going to the Big Ten because they're not the biggest, they're not the brightest, but, man, they somehow find a way to always be in big games and be competitive you know, within the conference and UCLA, I know a lot of the detractors of UCLA going to the big 10, they think they're going to get blown out. Try to find a way to get to where I was at. That's what I would say to those detractors. It's going to be a fun game. Kinnick stadium. Uh, I can't wait. That's going to be a big one. Number two, fairly obvious Ohio state. And yes, it is one of the big time programs within college football. We all know that Uh, Ryan day has that special relationship with chip. In fact, chip, found out they were going to the Big Ten with Ryan Day playing golf. You know, Ryan Day actually came up under the Chip Kelly system. I think that's going to be a fun kind of dynamic if UCLA is as competitive as I think they can be moving forward in the news with those two guys going at it. And the biggest thing that I had is this is the this is the biggest home game for UCLA outside of the USC game. And just to clarify, uh, I, I didn't announce this at the beginning of the top five teams. USC is not eligible for this list. So number one is not going to be USC. We get the USC game every year. It's incredible. But with the Big Ten move, I wanted to pick five new games that we can go to. Anyways, back to Ohio State. Ohio State, I think this is going to be a test to UCLA fans. How bad do we want to be considered a Big Ten team in terms of the fandom that we can provide to the Rose Bowl? If we can make that thing 50-50 – I feel very confident because Ohio State is one of the biggest fan bases in the entire country. They travel well. There's a lot in Southern California to begin with. On the surface, I believe it would be like 70-30, but I want it to be 50-50 UCLA Bruin fans. We can do this. We can ride, and we can really make a difference if we can pack that house, similar to what we did to LSU when they came to town. You know, there's probably two or three programs that have – you know, the it factor when it comes to college football, your Alabama's, your Georgia's, and you're probably Ohio State. I mean, those are probably the top three that I could think of. Uh, Clemson's got to be in there. We don't really address the team across town, so I'm not even going to get into that. But those three teams, they travel as well as any fan base. They show up loud and proud. And, you know, generally they're one of, if not the best team in the entire country. So that's going to be just a hallmark game for UCLA that I think is going to have UCLA fans pinching themselves, knowing that Ohio State, one of the all-time great traditions in college football, is now a conference opponent for UCLA. The number one for UCLA is a road game. It is University of Michigan, and I picked this one. I think, like I stated earlier, that UCLA should model themselves, at least in their football program, to what Iowa has done. But from a university standpoint, the history, the tradition, the multi-sports being talented, I think UCLA and Michigan line up so well with one another. You know, whether it's the basketball programs being very relevant, whether it's the academics, the legendary college players and teams, you know, your Fab Fives, your Charles Woodsons, and, you know, we got Kareem and Bill Walton and, you know, the 95 National Championship. We have so much going for us with UCLA, and, you know, I think Michigan – feels the same way about that. I think it would be a friendlier 
rivalry to get a part of. Obviously, where Michigan is at as a program, I think, is way higher than we are at right now. But Dante Moore, you got to remember, he's a Detroit kid. That kind of adds a little fire because he spurned Michigan to come out to UCLA. And I think that's going to be a real talking point if Moore is as good as we think he is. So you got more coming back home. You got two similar universities. You're going to be tailgating at the big house. I mentioned LSU is 103,000. Michigan has like 115,000. It's the biggest stadium in the country, hence the big house. To me, just where the universities align, the Dante Moore storyline going into that game, and just how the universities overlap and the respect that one another have for each other. I think that's the number one game. And that is the list. Uh, please like and subscribe to the Bruin Bible, guys. I really enjoyed doing this episode with, with you guys uh, and for you guys. So look forward to connecting with you guys soon. Make sure you're turning to the Bruin Bible. Like and subscribe to the Bruin Bible itself and the UCLA LFB channel. We are officially out, Bruin Bible. Take it easy, guys.